The Littlest One by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro I'm sitting on the doorstep and I'm eating bread and jam And I aren't a crying really, though I specs you think I am I'm feeling rather lonely and I don't know what to do Cause there's no one here to play with and I've broke my hoop in too I can hear the children playing, but they says they don't want me, cause my legs are rather little and I run so slow, you see. So I'm sitting on the doorstep and I'm eating bread and jam, and I aren't a crying really, though it feels as if I am. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Nuggly Little Man by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro I tend that in the garden lives a nuggly little man, And he always wants to catch me if he can, if he can. But I tend that I am quicker than the nuggly little man. I tend he's often waiting in the corner by the gate, And he creeps along the shadows, but he's always just too late, And I tend he never gets me as I'm running through the gate. I tend he sits and watches in the hedge as I go by, and he pulls such nuggly faces cause he thinks he'll make me cry, but I tend I always laugh at him and whistle going by. And sometimes when I'm thinking of the nuggly little man, and it's getting nearly bedtime, then I wish I'd not began attending he was such a nuggly, nuggly little man. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Tit for Tat by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro It's cold and grey and still outside And everything is wet with rain I'm standing on the cushion seat And breathing on the window pane And drawing pictures with me hand The window's high against the sky I can't see out unless I stand I've drawn a house and chimney pot I've drawn a man and children too an apple and a toasting fork, and someone who is just like you, and Grandma sitting in the rain. The pain's so small, I've filled it all, and specs I'll have to breathe again. But Jane has spoilt it now. She says I want a whipping, and I don't. She's rubbed the window clean, and says she'll fetch a policeman, but she won't. And now she's gone downstairs again. I'm breathing on the window pane. I'll draw a nuggly one of Jane. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Pair of Spectacles by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro Whenever I've been naughty, I cannot bear to see the eyes of people looking hurt or angrily at me. If someone's got to scold me, I'd rather Uncle Joe, because he has on spectacles that catch the light, and so I cannot see him looking, but instead the glass reflects, and to myself so little like I see in Uncle's specs. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Little Blue Sunbonnet by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro Little Blue Sunbonnet looks through the gate To see if it's cherries I've got on the plate To see what I'm doing, to see if there's a lot And if I'm alone in the garden or not She's ever so curious and always looks through Whenever she passes to see what I do and sometimes I tend there is someone with me, and I talk and she tries to see who it can be, and wiggles about till her face is all pink, but who there is with me she never can think. She's always got toffees or sweeties that crack, and so I can hear her whenever she's back. I don't mind her looking while I'm having tea or mother or someone is playing with me, but if I've been naughty or crying, I hate for little blue bonnet to look through the gate. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Hole in the Curtain by Marion St. John Webb 
read for LibriVox.org by Caro. Someone's torn the curtain, and I think it must be me. I climbed up to the window, and the curtain caught my knee, and then it wrapped my foot up, and I heard a hole, you see. Auntie's sure to notice, cause it's bigly as could be. She's coming, I can hear her up the stairs to have her tea. I wish I was the bigly hole, and bigly hole was me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Creaking Stair by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro I think a little brownie elf lives in the next to top his stair And sits inside and squeaks hisself to frighten me away from there. So when I go up in the day and holding on to mother's dress I kick the creaky stair and say, You frighten now, old man, I guess. But when I go upstairs alone, I hum and hold my ears about, and always wish my legs was grown so several stairs could be left out. And when it's night, it isn't fair to talk about the brownie elf who's in the next to top his stair. It makes me sort of creak myself. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Good Idea by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro Cos Pussy's turned her back to me, they say it's going to rain, And though I turn her round about, she turns her back again. I want it to be fine today, and so I think I'll creep And sit the other side of her while she is fast asleep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Aunt Priscilla by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro When Aunt Priscilla comes to tea, they always send and call for me to come this minute. I run away and hide, but though I've hidden every place I know, they find me in it. They pull me out and scold me then, and take me to the parlour when I'm brushed and proper. And Aunt Priscilla's there in black, and pats my head and jerks it back. I wish they'd stop her. She says, and how is it today? And will it kiss its auntie, eh? Why, it's been crying. And though I says I never cries, she dabs her hanky in me eyes and says I'm trying. She thinks I'm such a fretful child, and mother's always much too mild with me, she guesses. And then she says that she was good when she was young and never stood on people's dresses. She frowns and pushes me away and rubs her skirt and says a day with me would kill her. Her frowning makes me cold and hot, and oh, I wish I hadn't got an Aunt Priscilla. She's come this afternoon to tea. I've found a box the size of me. I'm hiding in it. They're calling near and nearer still. They'll find me out. I know they will in half a minute. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Out in the Rain by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro Two steps down and into the garden Through the gate and into the lane Nobody's seen me, nobody's seen me All by myself I'm out in the rain Brown little puddles, the mud makes me slip. Rain from the willow trees, drip, drip, drip. A little worm wiggles across over there, and I laugh and I'm running with rain in my hair. I stop at the corner and pick up a stick, but all in a sudden I hear the gate click, and oh, it is Jane, she's out in the lane, and running towards me as quickly as quick. I wish I could be just a brown little worm that wiggles and wiggles along in the lane and hasn't got no one to fetch him his hat and scold him for being outside in the rain. Through the gate and back in the garden, two steps up and into the hall. Nothing and nobody's nice at all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Logic by Marion St. John Webb. Read for LibriVox.org by Caro. They've put me in the corner just because I threw a ball and broke the parlour window, and it isn't fair at all to put me in the corner making both my legs to stand because I accidentally broke a window with my hand. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Caterpillar Grass by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro Down along the garden, by the tree that's split in two, grow the caterpillar grasses, and I don't know what to do, cos I've pulled the fuzzy head off one and put it up my sleeve, and I wish it wouldn't tickle and I'm trying not to breathe, cos I want to feel it walking, though I didn't think it could, all the way up to my shoulder like they told me that it would. But it's such a little fuzzy one that's creeping up my sleeve that I'm frightened it's a really one and not a make-believe. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Jane by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro Jane always spoils the tales I tell. She never seems to understand like Mother does when I tell her what people do in Fairyland. She keeps on asking how and why and laughs in places where I don't. She never tells me tales herself. I often ask her, but she won't. And when she plays at tending games, she keeps forgetting what to do and leaves out half the tending parts and says her words all wrongly too. She never seems to understand, but makes the tending always feel it's only tending all the time, and not a bit as if it's real. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lady Who Doesn't Come In by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro The door from the passage will swing open wide and nobody's touching it. No one outside, at least it is no one that people can see, but Mother and me. It's only the lady who doesn't come in. We tend that she's old and she's little and thin and nobody asks her to come in to tea but mother and me. She never comes in but perhaps some day she might and so just in case if the door clicks at night I don't ask her in when it happens to be there's no one but me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. White Moth by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro Flutterin' white out of the night, flitterin' flutterin' into the light, Little white moth over the cloth, round the red lamp that is warm and bright. Don't go too near, why can't you hear? Oh, you are silly, it serves you right. Quick, mother, quick, turn down the wick. Oh, there, he wasn't inside it quite. Little white moth over the cloth, flitterin', flutterin' up out of sight. Where can he be? There he is, see? Top of the curtain and all in a fright. Mother and I, both of us try, moving the curtain out ever so slight, shake him out there in the cool air, afterwards shutting the window up tight. Flutterin' white out in the night, tap in the window and all for the light. Stay where you are, better by far, flitterin' flutterin' out in the night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Reason by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro when I was naughty and sent up to bed and wouldn't go up, I was growing, I said, too big to be sent. Mother just shook her head. It's curious. She didn't believe that I was and didn't do like what I thought she would, cause she sent me upstairs to bed. 
when I was naughty and sent up to bed, and somehow I cried on the stairway and said I was only just little, then mother instead came suddenly to me with arms open wide. Her eyes were all shiny. Just little, she cried, and carried me down from bed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Perplexed by Marion St. John Webb. Read for LibriVox.org by Caro. I've been and hung my stocking up, and grandma's too, and writ and told old Santa Claus just what to do. I asked my grandma what she'd have. She shook her head, put on her specs, and fiddlesticks was all she said. I wonder what she wants them for. She didn't say. She hasn't got a fiddle, and she couldn't play. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Magic Door by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro It's down in the wood where the blackberries grow In a high wooden wall, and it's ever so small I could only just do it when squeezing in through it, and that's when I found it a long time ago. It looks like a hole where the wood's broken through, but it's really a door, and you crawl in before there's anyone sees you, and though it does squeeze you, you must get in quickly, whatever you do. It's part of the magic you mustn't be seen, and when you're inside you sit and you hide in the tall rustly grasses while somebody passes outside in the wood, where just now you have been. And then you get up and you go round a tree to the magic green pond and a little beyond where there's whispers and creeping and just as you're peeping it's suddenly quiet and there's nothing to see. Then something goes creak by the grey wishing stone and you think you'll go back as you feel so alone. But that's when I found it a long time ago. And now I've grown more, I can't get through the door. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Squeaky Shoes by Marion St. John Webb. Read for LibriVox.org by Caro. There's Aunt Matilda's children, and they're playing hide-and-seek, but they says I mustn't join them, cause I've got on shoes that squeak. And when you're playing hiding, you must never make a sound, or they'll creep along and hear you, and you're certain to be found. They said, Put on your slippers, come along and hide away. But I said I'd keep my shoes on, or I wouldn't go and play. So they've gone to play without me. They can just do what they choose, cause I had them new this morning. I shall sit and wear my shoes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On the Shore by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro The little waves come running in as if they want to catch me, and then they stop and make a noise because they couldn't snatch me. And then they turn and run away and never get to where I stay. And then they meet some other waves and tell them me and mother are sitting here and watching them and laughing with each other. Then mother says they all turn round and rush towards us with a bound. But all of them are too afraid to come up to the beach here in case they go and lose themselves like one that tried to reach here. It fell into a hole near me and can't get back into the sea. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Blue Curtains by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro Blue curtains, blue curtains, you can't get away, though the wind rushes by and says, Do come and play. You fling yourselves out and you tug all your might, but the curtain rod's got you and pulls you back tight. It's no good you twisting and twirling and trying and flapping and flying. There's sun on the grass and the window is wide. What a shame you are tied! 
Blue curtains, blue curtains, the wind goes away, and then you come in and hang quiet and stay, until all at once the wind comes back again and sweeps past the window and off up the lane, and there you go, twisting and twirling and trying and flapping and flying. I'm ever so sorry it's hurting you so you're longing to go. Blue curtains, I'm coming, I'm up on the sill. I must let you go. Just a minute. Keep still. Ah, now you are loose. Here's the wind come to play. He's got you. You're flying away and away. I watch you go twirling and twisting and curling and waving and whirling. It's lovely to see you out there when you're free. How glad you must be. Blue curtains, I'm leaning out here in the sun. But, oh, here is Jane, who says, What have you done? I tell her it's cause I was sorry for you, but she's angry and can't understand what I do. And so she goes flurry and worry and scurry downstairs in a hurry to catch you and bring you indoors here again. Do fly down the lane. She's coming, she's coming, oh, do get away. Blue curtains don't wait for a minute to play. Oh, dear, the wind's stopped and you turn round and round and slowly and slowly you float to the ground. It's no good you twisting and twirling and trying and flapping and flying, for Jane's got you tight and is bringing you in. I knew she would win. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ambition by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro There's a little black doorway and not any door, and you go down a passage with stones on the floor, and it's ever so dark, and the walls are so hard, and you turn round a corner and into a yard, and there's steps that go down to the water. And out in the yard there's a very old man who's painting a boat, and he says if he can, and when the boat's finished, we'll go out to sea and bring home a fish that is bigger in me, and we'll go down the steps to the water. I'd like to be old and be painting a boat, and have on some whiskers and not wear a coat, and live down a passage, cause then I could play, and paddle and climb up and down all the day, on the steps that go down to the water. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Play in Music by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro At even in time, before the lights are lit, I often leave my toys and go and sit To hear while mother's playing. The music makes me feel so quiet and still I like to think and tend about it till I find out what it's saying. And sometimes it will laugh and sing and jump And make me want to swing my legs and thump and sometimes it is sighing, and mother plays it soft and sad and slow, because, she says, it does remind her so of little children crying. And when I look up at the door I see there is Daddy standing watching her and me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Sunset Garden by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro I can see from the window a little brown house, and the garden goes up to the top of the hill, and the sun comes each day and slips down away at the end of the garden and sleeps there, until the daylight comes climbing up over the hill. I do wish I lived in the little brown house, then at night I'd go out to the garden and creep, up, up, then I'd stop and lean over the top, at the end of the garden, and so I could peep, and see what the sun looks like when it's asleep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Tears by Marion St. John Webb. Read for LibriVox.org by Caro. If all the little children who are crying at this minute could only see each other, they would all forget to cry. I think they'd see how many children's tears the world has in it, 
and wonder there were handkerchiefs enough to make them dry. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Through the Prickle Hedge by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro While all the grown-up people sat and talked upon the lawn, we scrambled through the prickle hedge, and one of us got torn. And out into the lane we went and passed the willow tree, Aunt Matilda's children, Mr. Peter Dog, and me. We played about the garden all the kind of games we could, and so we went along the lane and down into the wood. But just as we had got inside and one of us looked round, a little girl we didn't know had followed us, we found. Her hair was black and straggly, and her dress was old and worn, and she only had one stocking on, and that was very torn. And who she was and where she came from none of us could tell, and when we stopped and stared at her, she stopped and stared as well. And one of Aunt Matilda's children shouted, "'Hello, kid!' But she never answered anything, but stood and stared, she did. And Aunt Matilda's children said, Perhaps she is a witch. Let's make a fire and burn her like they used to, in this ditch. And they laughed and started picking sticks and threw them in a pile, and kept on singing, Burn, old witch, and shouting all the while. I whispered, Not a really fire. Of course it's only play. But they shouted, Yes, a really fire. Don't let her run away. Then she pulled an ugly face at us and said, You'd better add, my mother is a gypsy, and she'd be most awful mad, and if I call she'll hear me, she lives inside this wood. And all of us were still at once and looked at where she stood. Aunt Matilda's children whispered, Let us run away. We mustn't talk to gypsies. They'll steal you if you stay. But the little girl was watching, and she said, Oh, no, you won't, or else I'll call. Now what you going to give me if I don't? And all of us were quiet again. Then something made us squeak. So we gave her someone's brooch. And then we heard the bushes creak. And so she took a coat, a hat, and Mr. Peter's collar. And now, she said, you mustn't tell, you promise, or I'll holler. Then Aunt Matilda's children cried, It isn't fair a bit, and snatched their things away and said, Come on, let's run for it. And all of us began to run as quickly as we could, and as we ran she started shouting, shouting through the wood. And some of us fell over, scrambled up and on again, and the wood was full of creakings, but at last we found the lane. Only some of us were crying, and we kept on looking round, but the gypsies didn't follow, and we couldn't hear a sound, till nearly home. We heard the grown-ups talking on the lawn, so we scrambled through the prickle hedge, and two of us got torn, and out into the garden just as quickly as could be. Aunt Matilda's children, Mr. Peter Dog, and me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Goblin's Lanterns by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro It's dark outside, but I can see a big red glow beside the hill. The man who makes the horse's shoes goes hammer, hammer, hammer still. And sparks fly out up in the air, and fall away into the night. But as they're falling, one by one, they vanish suddenly from sight. I think there's goblins in the wood must pass at night and catch each spark to put inside their lanterns when they're hobbling homewards in the dark. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Out of the World by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro When mother is tired or worried or sad, she slips away and down the garden, into a place of cool green trees, where always, she says, there's a tiny breeze whispering up in the treetops. 
and always it makes her quiet and glad, and she sits and thinks, and she feels she's somewhere out of the world and looking on, watching the things that are passing and gone. And she says she can see such a lot doesn't matter, so she leaves all her worries there under a tree, and the things that do matter she puts in her heart, and comes back to the world and to Daddy and me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Buttercup by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro I've got a fairy in a box. I made her all myself. I always keep her safe away on Mother's shelf. I thought of her and cut her out, but Mother sewed her up. And then I picked a name for her. It's Buttercup. I mustn't tell you what she's like. She asked me not to say, in case you tried to make her, if you knew the way. And then she'd not know which to be, if there were two of her, you see. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Other One by Marion St. John Webb Read for LibriVox.org by Caro In the book that Daddy's going to write, he says there's going to be some funny little children, and there's one as big as me. I've asked him all about the one and what it's going to do. He says it's got a bat and ball like mine that's painted blue. It isn't quite as old as me and isn't quite as good, and never will say, if you please, as little children should. It always cries at bedtime, and I only sometimes do, and he thinks I am the bravest and the most obedient too. I ask him can it jump as high, and then I show him how. He says perhaps it couldn't, and he thinks it's bedtime now. I'd like to tend it isn't, but I'm going up, you see, or else he'll say the other one is betterer than me. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. End of The Littlest One, His Book, by Marion St. John Webb. Recording by Carew.